Well, hello, and welcome back to Vicki's Country Home. I'm getting ready to head up to Lake Tahoe, and if you've never seen pictures of it or been there, it's amazing. But it's high altitude, gorgeous alpine lake, surrounded by mountains. But it's also that time of year when temperatures are doing this here and there. And so we're going to have 10 beautiful ladies in one house. That's a, a large house, but we are going to have 10 ladies all gathered together for several days during changing seasons. And you know what that means. It means there's always something going around. So I'm going to take something that I hope will help prevent that from happening at least this weekend. And maybe I can get them to continue taking it after. And some of you probably have already guessed, but it's elderberry syrup. And I'm not creating something new. I'm doing something that there's plenty of videos out there. So take your pick, but do yourself a favor and Try this for yourself and your family because we rely way too much on drugs. We take a pill or go to the doctor every time something happens. I don't want to do that. That's not what I want for my family. So come along, we're going to make elderberry syrup. Before I get started, there's a couple things I need to share with y'all. First of all, when I was leaving Mrs. Lori, which really made me sad in Arkansas, she's become such a sister to me, and I, I can't tell you how much she means. And as I was leaving, she gifted me with what she calls her cafeteria lady apron. <laughs> she says, they're ugly. Well, you know what? I love it. I love that it's got so much coverage. I'm not ashamed to be a cafeteria lady, Miss Lori, so thank you. I love it. But also, I had a beautiful surprise in the mail from another sister of the heart that I found through YouTube. I have been so blessed. You just can't even understand how blessed I have because I started this channel. So. I received this in the mail from a beautiful sister of the heart. <coughs> I'm getting choked up from down under. Beautiful lady and we've never met. I hope to someday, but we have never met face to face and that doesn't matter. It doesn't stop us from being sisters. And she blessed me with this beautiful bracelet and the story behind this and it's not just mine there's another sister involved and she might want to share that with you the story is that we have become sisters of the heart because of you two because of this huge thing that nobody can control all we can do is make a video and put it up there and wait for the YouTube powers that be to share it. And because of that, we have grown so close that we really feel like we're sisters. And so, hope, love, and faith. Thank you. It's beautiful. So. I, I, I just can't thank you enough for this symbol that means so much. So thank you so much. All right, now that I've gotten all choked up, let's get started. This is such an easy recipe. It doesn't take that long. And it is just so powerful and we, we should all consider using this during this time of year and through the winter when we're sharing colds and everything else. 
we need to build up, build up our immune system. And that's one of the things that elderberries will do for you. So we're going to use those, and these are dried. I get from Mountain Rose Herbs. I trust them. And I have fresh ginger, which it also helps strengthen your immune system. So we're going to put that in there. And then we need raw honey. And local honey is even better. So if you can get raw local honey, I encourage you to do so. But no matter what, get the raw. Don't get the processed if you can help it because everything's been cooked out of it. All the things that will help you have been cooked out of that. So to get started, we're going to measure out two-thirds cup of these dried black elderberries. And they're just small berries that have been dried. They're kind of hard. But get them from a reputable source if you can. If you can get fresh, even better. I don't have that luxury. So I've got two-thirds cup of those dried elderberries. Okay, now what we're going to do, I'm going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon powder. And I'm going to add half a teaspoon of cloves. But if you have dried, if all you have is the ground cloves, you can use a half teaspoon of that also. But I have the whole cloves, so I'm just going to add that in. Now I'm going to set this aside for the moment. And I need two tablespoons of fresh or dried ginger root but I'm going to add two tablespoons of fresh so I'm just going to peel it with a spoon just scrape it off and I could mince this but you know what I'm just going to use this because it's so much faster. So I'm looking for two tablespoons, but you know what? I love ginger, so if it goes over, I'm not even going to worry about it. In fact, I think I'm going to do that much again. And this smells amazing. I love ginger no matter how it's prepared. In fact, in this winter, I love, or if I've got a cold, I love to make ginger lemon tea. And I just cut some chunks of ginger slices. I don't even peel it. And boil those up with some lemon slices in some water. And it's just wonderful. It's warming, it's healing. What can be better than that? Okay, let me wipe that off.
And I'm just trying to get off as much as possible, mostly to make it easier to wash. So, I have my dried elderberries, my dried clove. I've got at least two tablespoons of ginger and a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. Now to this, I'm going to add three and a half cups of water. And I would use filtered or purified, bottled, whatever. I would avoid tap water. So let me go get that and we'll come back. All right. To my other ingredients, I've added three and a half cups of water. Again, mine is filtered because all of my water is filtered. And I've just poured that in. I'm going to just stir it up, which it doesn't need a whole lot because it, there's not much that has to really combine. Now, I'm going to bring this to a boil. And as soon as it comes to a boil, I'm going to reduce the heat. And then I'm going to let it simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. And what I want is it for it to reduce by about half. So as soon as I get to that point, I will bring you back and show you what that looks like. And we'll see what we do next. All right. I let this simmer for just under an hour. And it may have even reduced a little bit more. So... If it did, I may add just a touch of water, but we'll see how that comes out. Now what I'm going to do is strain this into a clean, sterilized quart jar and hopefully not make too big a mess. And I think it, I think it reduced a lot more than I want. So I'll probably add some water, but I'm not going to do that yet. But you can see the beautiful color of these berries and the liquid. So I'm just going to press down. I want to get all that beautiful goodness out of there. Now I'm just going to sit, let this sit and finish draining for a little while longer. And what I want to do is let this cool off just a bit before I go further. So we're going to just leave it sitting here. We'll come back, press out the rest of the liquid, and then we'll come back for the next step. All right. I let this drain for a little bit, and then I poured about another cup of very hot water through it. And I pressed and pressed and pressed, and there's still a little bit coming out, but mostly it's finished. So I'm going to set that aside, and that's going to go to my compost pile. So now we've got about a pint of this beautiful, rich juice from the, the berries, from the ginger, all of that goodness is in this jar. Now we're going to add one cup, and it's cooled down some. It's not super hot. We don't want to add honey, raw honey, to something that's too hot. In fact, I think I'm going to cool just a little bit more because I don't want to kill the good things in the honey. So let's let it sit for a few more minutes. I just tested the temperature of this and it's just lukewarm now. So I'm going to add this honey and it was partially crystallized. 
that doesn't mean it's gone bad. It all pretty much will at some point. Most of this was given to me by a friend here locally. But some of this I bought and it's sort of local. It's a little bit of a distance away, but it's actually close to where we're going. So that's perfect. So we just want to get that out. Now we're going to just stir it in. We want to combine it well. And I found this recipe from wellnessmama.com. However, all of the recipes that I looked at were really pretty similar. There may be slight differences, but they're all mostly the same. And I think for the most part the ingredients are the same, although some people might add a few extra things. But again, there's tons of videos out there about this, so you be sure and check out some more. Okay, so it's well combined. And now I'm just going to put a lid on this. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and this will keep for a couple of weeks refrigerated. And like I said, this is going to be for quite a few ladies, so hopefully we're all going to take it and we're all going to get the immunity boost from it. Now the dosage for this for children is half a teaspoon to one teaspoon and for adults it's half a tablespoon to one tablespoon a day. Now if you get coming down with the flu or if you're coming down with a cold or whatever or you are exposed to it, you might want to consider taking this every two to three hours instead of once a day, just until there's no more symptoms. So here we go. Elderberry syrup made from home. You know it's safe. So I encourage you to check it out and maybe try it for yourself and your family. And again, thank you to Mrs. Lori for my apron. And thank you to Hope, Faith, and Love, my dear friend that's almost 7,500 miles away. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. Hit the little notification bell if you want to get all of my videos. And again, thank you for watching. and. God bless, and we will talk again soon.